Hello there and welcome to Studio Classroom. Thank you so much for joining us here today. My name is Gabe. And I'm Anne Marie. Today, as usual, is a great day to learn something new. It certainly is. Let's do that together. Our lesson today is dogs, everybody's best friend. Yes, that is the nickname we have for dogs. They are man's best friend, referring not only to men, but women, you know, mankind in general. Um, we also posted on our social media a question, do you have a dog? And I was kind of surprised by the response, Anne-Marie, because only 16% of the people who responded have a dog. Only 16% of you have dogs? That surprised me as well. And I thought about it. I think I have the impression that a lot of people have dogs because people who have dogs are outside all the time mm -hmm. taking care of their dogs. Okay. So maybe those people are just more visual, vis visible in society in general because sure. they're always outside with their dogs. Okay, or maybe because they're always outside so they don't have time on social media to respond to. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I didn't think about that, but maybe. <laughs> maybe. We had another question. Why do dogs make good pets? And here were some of your answers. They are faithful, loyal, devoted, loving, friendly. Someone said, I'm afraid of them. That's understandable. <laughs> Someone else said, they stink. <laughs> oh, my husband wrote in that answer. Oh. He, he doesn't think dogs make great pets. He likes dogs. He just doesn't want to have one in our house. Well, thank you very much, Anne-Marie's <laughs> husband, for that response. <laughs> it's true. Some dogs stink, especially some of those bigger dogs. Anyway, friends, how do you feel about dogs? Are you a dog lover or a cat lover or something else? Today our lesson is all about dogs, so let's get right into it. dogs, everybody's best friend. Which breed is best for you? Over the years, I've owned nine dogs, each one with its own unique personality. I've observed, though, that dogs of the same breed seem to have many similarities, ranging from size to temperament. Hey everyone, welcome to Language Lab. I'm Jack. 我们先来看 breed 这个名词，它的意思是动植物的品种。例如， what breed of dog does your neighbor own? 你邻居的狗是什么品种的? Breed 也有类型或是种类的意思。譬如， these days Hollywood is making movies about a new breed of action heroes. 最近好莱坞正在拍摄新一代的动作英雄电影 Breed 也可以当动词,意思是饲养或是培育。例如, This past summer, my family visited a ranch in Wyoming where they breed cattle and horses. 去年夏天,我们全家参观了怀俄明州的一个牧场,那里饲养牛和马。Thank you very much, Jack. Well, dogs, everybody's best friend. First of all, Anne-Marie, would you agree with that statement? Dogs are everybody's best friend? I think that they can be best friends to the people who take care of them. Yeah. Um, I would argue the same for my cat. I think my cat is a pretty good pet. Yeah, you know, that, there's a reason why we're cat people. Yes. We, maybe we could talk about that, and I'm sure we will talk about that, uh, you know, <laughs> as we go along here. Um, but I think one reason why dogs have the nickname man's best friend is because um, there are so many stories of all types of dogs who come to the rescue, not only for their own owner, or the person who takes care of them, but just for people in society in general, more so than 
most other domestic pets that we have. Yeah, that is true. And I think dogs are generally seen as very loyal animals as well. And it depends on the breed that we're talking about as well, right? And that is kind of what we're going to look at today. We see here which breed is best for you. Now, if something is best for, we're talking about being the best fit or the best for the situation. You could say, which shoes are best for this weather? Of course, if it's raining, you might want some rain boots, but each individual person might have a certain dog breed that would be better for them to have as a pet. Exactly, it's kind of subjective, right? It's best for you, but not necessarily for anybody else. Over the years, I've owned nine dogs. This is what our writer says, each one with its own unique personality. I have observed though that dogs of the same breed seem to have many similarities ranging from size to temperament. So first of all, that word observed, okay? We could re rephrase this sentence to say, however I have observed, because so, she's kind of contrasting something with the first sentence. She's saying that dogs of the same breed actually seem to have similarities. That's right, and I know that oftentimes when people are looking at getting a dog, they will look for a specific breed because of its personality or character traits. And similarities, of course, means that across the board, there are things that are the same. For example, when I was growing up, I had a black lab mix. So this black lab was generally really good with kids because Labradors are known for being good family dogs. Okay, so they're good family dogs. How would you describe the temperament of a black lab. You said friendly. Sometimes we add an adjective to that word temperament. They have a friendly temperament. Would you agree? Yeah, I would say in general, my dog was really, really friendly. He was very high strung, so he had a lot of excitement built up and he had to exercise a lot. When I think about somebody or something who's that's high strung, I think that maybe they get anxious a lot. Would you say that I describes your dog? I would say he'd get excited, but not anxious. Okay, really excited. Mm. Okay, has to get out and exercise. Friends, if you haven't guessed already, that word temperament refers to the emotional character of a person or animal, um, especially as you can see in their behavior, the way that they interact. Well, we have more to learn right now. Dogs, everybody's best friend. Since breeds have certain characteristics, do some research on those you're interested in. That information can help you determine what type of dog will be a good fit for your family. Corgis, for example, are considered good dogs for families with school-age children. They are playful, happy, and affectionate, and make great companions. In fact, Corgis were the dog of choice for the late Queen Elizabeth II of England. Affectionate,这个形容词意思是充满情感的。来看几个例句。the elderly couple held hands and exchanged affectionate looks as they walked through the park. 这对老夫妇手牵着手在公园里散步时深情地交换着眼神。或者是, When they returned from a long trip to Europe, the children gave affectionate hugs and kisses to their grandparents. 当孩子们从欧洲长途旅行回来时，给了祖父母一个深情的拥抱和亲吻。Affectionate的名词是affection，意思是喜爱或钟爱。比如， babies and children need a lot of affection from their parents to grow up to be self-confident. 婴幼儿需要父母很多的关爱，长大后才能成为自信的人。接下来看 companion 这个名词意思是同伴。譬如 Monique and Jessica were traveling companions on a trip to Africa last spring. 去年春天 Monique和Jessica结伴去非洲旅行。或者是 
Jeffrey and Robert were close companions when they were in high school. Jeffrey 和 Robert 在高中时期是很要好的同伴。再来看一句 ，Stu's friends asked him who his beautiful dinner companion was last Friday night. Stu 的朋友们问他上周晚上那位美丽的晚餐女伴是谁。Thank you so much, Jack, our dear language lab companion. Well, let's continue with our lesson. Since breeds have certain characteristics, do some research on those you're interested in. There are、uh, different words for characteristics. You could talk about、uh, the traits that an animal or a pet might have as well. It kind of means the same thing. But what about breeds, Anne Marie? There are different breeds of dogs. That's right. Well, a breed is a set of animals, or it could be a group of plants as well. They all have a distinctive appearance that has been deliberately developed. So, generally speaking, the dogs of a same breed all are going to look the same. They're going to have the same traits, and that has been done on purpose. That's right. It's been done on purpose. That's an important thing to keep in mind. Um, for people who are breeding dogs, right? Well, some breeds have certain characteristics. Do some research, and just as a side note, that word can be pronounced in different ways. Some people insist it should be pronounced research and researchers, but I say research and researchers. That's right. Well, we read on here that information can help you determine what type of dog will be a good fit for your family. Well, if something is a good fit, it means that it is very suitable. We use this phrase a lot when talking about people who will fit into a certain group, like for example, of coworkers. Maybe your your company is looking for a new person to hire, and you'll look to see if a candidate will be a good. Fit or not? Yeah, or maybe you have kids and you're looking for a babysitter. There are a lot of great candidates out there, but even though everyone might be great, you still want to find one that's a good fit for your kids, right?、Um, and that's going to depend on how they interact with each other. Well, we read on here, corgis, for example, are considered good dogs for families with school-age children. School-age children. What do you think that range is, Anne Marie? From from preschool up until college, or maybe are we talking about from first grade through the end of high school? Yeah, usually when we're talking about school-aged children, we're talking about children who are about six or seven years old, all the way until they graduate high school. When we refer to people's children who are of different ages, we might say preschool-aged children or college-aged children. Right. And、uh, so we're talking about school-age children here. They are playful, happy, and affectionate, and make great companions. So that's not the primary purpose of a dog. It's not to be a great companion to humans. However, when we see the phrase "they make great companions," we know that this is what they are as well, or what they can be. Here's another example for how to use that phrase: You would make a great elementary school teacher. You're not a teacher right now, but I know you. You're really good with little kids, and you have teacher-like qualities. You'd make a great teacher. That's a really great example. All right, friends, we'll be right back after today's info cloud. Hey, everyone! Welcome to Info Cloud. Hi, Garrett. I've been thinking about how competitive the workplace can be. Yeah, everyone is so focused on their own success that they don't care about helping others or playing fair. It's a real dog-eat-dog -dog world out there. Dog-eat-dog -dog world. What do you mean?、Uh, well, the term dog-eat-dog -dog just describes a competitive situation. It's like saying everyone's out for themselves. And not helping or caring about others. So the phrase compares people to a pack of hungry dogs that are fighting over food. They don't care about anything but getting the food, so they'll do whatever it takes to get it for themselves. Exactly, Rex. It's like saying people have a survival of the fittest mentality. Only the strongest win and survive. 
Wow, that, that sounds terrible. I'm glad we don't live in a dog-eat-dog -dog world. <laughs> Fortunately, the phrase doesn't only describe serious situations. You can also use it for light-hearted competitions, like when people are arguing about who gets the last piece of pizza at a party. Or when two kids want the front seat of the car and it turned into a race. Yeah, it's often just a friendly reminder that we should be ready to compete, but not turn into crazy, selfish people. Calm down, everyone. 我们经常听到人们说这个社会是一个狗咬狗的世界，英文也有几乎一模一样的用语，那就是dog eat dog. 字面上是狗吃狗，这是用来形容一种极度竞争的环境。如果有人在感叹外面的竞争太过激烈了，他可能会说，it's a dog eat dog 这就是把人比喻成一群争夺食物的恶犬。这就让我们想到另外一个用语 survival of the fittest 也就是适者生存。有时候这种观念会让人忽略了每一个人生来都是有价值的。这就是今天的InfoCloud,我们下次云端见。Everybody's best friend. These little dogs with big personalities have long bodies and short legs, and the Welsh originally used them to herd cattle. Because they are so anxious to please their owners, corgis are usually easy to train. They enjoy being the center of attention and love being with their owners. If you're looking for a quiet dog, you're barking up the wrong tree. Corgis often bark when they hear strange noises, but the noisy habit can be reduced with training. So, you can herd the dogs. The cowboys rounded up the wild horses and herded them into the fence in grassy area. 牛仔们把野马围了起来,然后把他们赶到有炸离的草地上。或者是, The teacher herded her students into the lunchroom after English class. 英语课后,老师把学生们赶进了餐厅。Herd当名词时,是指一群人或是动物。比如, in the 1800s, herds of buffalo could be seen throughout the western part of the U.S. 在十九世纪，美国西部地区随处可以看见成群的野牛。Thank you so much, Jack. Well, we read on here about corgis. These little dogs with big personalities have long bodies and short legs. Wait, what does it mean? if an animal or somebody has a big personality? Well, if someone has a big personality, it means that they are very extreme in some way. And this could be a good thing or a bad thing, but maybe for other people, they might think that this personality is a little bit hard to handle. Hard to handle. I also get the idea that um, some, some people with big personalities also like to be the center of attention. It's hard to ignore people with big personalities. They're not making any effort to uh, stay out of the spotlight most of the time. Um, and here we're talking about these animals with big personalities. They're very noticeable, hard to ignore. So they have long bodies and short legs. And the Welsh originally used them to herd cattle. Now, Jack just talked about that word herd, but he didn't talk about having a herd mentality. This is the idea. It describes how people can be influenced by the majority 
even if they didn't already think a certain way. All right, that's a good term for you to know, friends, a herd mentality. All right, well, talking about corgis here, because they are so anxious to please their owners, corgis are usually easy to train. Now, if someone is anxious to do something, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're worried or they feel anxiety surrounding that thing. It just means that they really want to do it. So corgis are anxious. They really want to please their owners. So if you're the type of owner that really needs someone or something in your life to please you, then maybe you can consider getting a corgi. It might fill that, um, <laughs> fill that need. Fill that need, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so corgis are easy to train. They enjoy being the center of attention. So that goes, that phrase goes hand in hand with having a big personality, okay? They have, they like to be the center of attention. Um, and I mentioned the word spotlight earlier. Uh, that made me think of a related phrase, to steal the spotlight. So maybe people are paying attention to something else or another animal, but then corgis come along and they might try to steal the spotlight and make everybody focus on them. That's right. Well, it says here that corgis also love being with their owners. If you're looking for a quiet dog, you're barking up the wrong tree. What a great sentence for us, for us to look at here as we are talking about dogs. If you are barking up the wrong tree, what does that mean? Right, this means that you are wrong about the reason for doing something or the method for doing something, or you're just wrong about your suspicion about something. Here's another example. Peter didn't commit the crime. The police are barking up the wrong tree by insisting that he did it. Okay, but here we're probably specifically talking about real dogs barking here because it says here corgis often bark when they hear strange noises. So our writer has used this phrase in two different ways here, friends. The noisy habit can be reduced with training. All right, friends. Well, we will be right back after today's fun fact. Hello, fact friends. I'm Detective Ernest Finder, and I have a very fun fact for you today. Did you know that Queen Elizabeth II's first corgi was named Sarah? It's true. Sarah was her first, and she has had many corgi dogs. She loved them. She also had a corgi dachshund mix named Fergus. Hmm, that's a better name. This was one of her last dogs. A, a dachshund is a dog that looks uh, very much like a hot dog, short and long. Uh, Fergus was so cute and is still alive, I think. <laughs> I should call him. <laughs> that's today's fun fact. <laughs> Well, we've learned quite a few things today about corgis, and here is a quiz for you to see what you remember. Anne-Marie is going to write it down on her whiteboard. Fill in the blank. Corgis enjoy being the center of what? What do you think it is? We learned about temperaments today. We talked about research or research. We talked about companions. We talked about attention. We talked about barking up the wrong tree. Anne-Marie, what word did you write down? I have written down attention. And is that true? Yeah, the center of attention. Corgis enjoy being the center of attention. And they are noisy dogs, friends. So if you're looking for a quieter dog, maybe you want to look elsewhere. Maybe you want to consider um, one of the dogs we'll talk about in tomorrow's part of this lesson. So make sure that you join us then right here on Studio, Studio Classroom. Classroom. At all times, a friend endures at all times, a good friend lasts a lifetime. I am so proud to have you in my life, a good friend lasts a lifetime.